I just listened to the uh, colloquy between the two uh, members of the banking committee and as they outlined the importance of true Wall Street accountability and the Wall Street uh, reforms that we'll consider hopefully in the, in the near future. Uh, and I rise to speak about a particular opportunity I think we have as we consider this important and, and far-reaching reform legislation. And that is uh, to discuss a piece of legislation I've introduced today called the Fair Access to Credit Scores Act of 2010. Senator Luger and I are joining together along with eight of our colleagues to introduce this bill that would put consumers back in control of their finances. Uh, this bill takes a common sense uh, yet significant uh, step in that direction, Mr. President, by offering Americans annual access to their credit score when they access their annual free credit report. Now, I'm making that distinction, Mr. President, between your score uh, and your report. A report tells consumers what outstanding credit accounts they have open, like student loans or credit cards, maybe a car or even a home loan. Unfortunately, it tells Americans little else. And often, uh, they already know, they hopefully should know, that, that information that's in their credit report. Now, in contrast, Mr. President, your credit score, which our legislation would make available, is what banks and lenders and increasingly even employers have access to. It's critical information each one of us needs to know. But today, you and I, Mr. President, we'd have to jump through hoop after hoop and ultimately have to pay to have access to our own credit score while banks and lenders can get a hold of this information much more easily. And Mr. President, I know your history. That's, si that's simply not fair. I know you've been a strong advocate for fairness in America in whatever walk of life. In 2003, Congress enacted legislation that required the three major consumer credit reporting agencies provide a free annual report to each one of us uh, on a yearly basis. Uh, this law was known as the FACT Act, and it was an uh, important step in ensuring that financial records that, uh, of American consumers are accurate, so you could cross-check as a consumer what was in your report. Now, many of us, uh, many of my constituents in Colorado have seen the frequent television commercials and internet advertisements that are, uh, and they're led to believe that the annual credit report required under law re includes this credit score that I'm discussing. Unfortunately, we're all disappointed, I have been actually personally, to find out that you only have access to your credit report. And that's not uh, critical information that helps you judge your credit worthiness. Uh, you actually have to purchase uh, your score or subscribe to a credit monitoring service that can uh, cost you up to $200 a year to receive it. There's some troubling cases that even go a step further, Mr. President, where consumers believe they're signing up for a free credit score, only, they, uh, only to find out later that they've actually signed up for a costly monthly monitoring service instead. Uh, this is simply, it's not fair. Uh, it's why the Consumer Federation of America and the Consumers Union both support this legislation. Your score, your credit score, is a critical piece of information that affects your interest rates, your monthly payments on home loans, and it could be the difference between one that, whether one of your children uh, can afford college or not. Even more uh, concerning, as I alluded to uh, earlier, Mr. President, this information is increasingly being used to decide whether or not you'll be offered a job. You apply for a job, your uh, potential employer has access to that information, you don't even know what it is. This is personal information, and the consumer uh, themselves seem to be the only people that don't have access, easy access, to it. Mr. President, we're talking about empowering American consumers when we pass, and I know we will, Wall Street accountability legislation. We want to empower consumers be able to shape their own financial futures and, and thereby the country's financial future. And to do that, we have to have transparency. When you have free access to your credit score, although that's a small part of the larger reforms we need, it addresses one of the fundamental inequities that pervades our current financial system. Put simply, Mr. President, the one-sided marketplace today is rigged to benefit large financial institutions at the expense of hardworking Americans struggling to support their families and save for retirement. Consumers continually find themselves on the losing end of this bargain. So with so much at stake, 
This legislation that we filed today is a small step to help restore balance and put Americans back in charge of their financial health. My hope is that as this chamber considers the Wall Street accountability bill, we will consider adding this legislation as an amendment to restore an even greater dose of fairness to consumers in Colorado, to the presiding officers, constituents in Minnesota, and all over the rest of our nation. Let me just close by thanking the group of senators who have joined me. Senator Luger, Senator Scott Brown, Hagan, Levin, Lieberman, Klobuchar, Menendez, Shaheen, and Tom Udall have joined me in putting consumers first by co-sponsoring this common sense pro-consumer legislation. I'd ask each one of my colleagues as well to join me in supporting its passage. Mr. President, uh, I, uh, I yield the floor. Mr. President. Senator from New Mexico. Uh, Mr. President, uh, last month our country lost a great American with the passing of Stuart Udall, who, was, who, who among his many achievements is probably best remembered for his accomplishments as Secretary of Interior uh, during the presidency of President Kennedy and President Johnson his lifetime of work to protect our public lands and his efforts to improve the quality of our environment are unequal. Stuart Udall was instrumental in the passage of virtually all of our nation's landmark environmental laws, including the Clean Air Act of 1963, the Wilderness Act of 1964, the Federal Water Pollution Control Act of 1965, the Endangered Species Act of 1966, the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966, the National Trail System Act of 1968, and the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act of 1968. Nearly half a century later, these laws remain the key protections for our nation's land and air and water. In addition, he oversaw significant additions to the National Park System and the National Wildlife Refuge System. Many years after he left office, he was a driving force behind the enactment of the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act of 1990. In the 161-year history of the Department of Interior, there have been many exceptional individuals who have served as Secretary of Interior, and Stuart Udall certainly ranks among the best of those. In recognition of his lifetime of work pursuing the common good and protecting our nation's public lands and waters, and in particular, his achievements as the Secretary of Interior. Uh, I'm today introducing legislation to designate the Department of Interior building here in Washington, D.C. as the Stuart Lee Udall Department of Interior building. I'm pleased to have Mark Udall, Senator Mark Udall, Senator John McCain, and uh, Senator Harry Reid, our Majority Leader, as, as co-sponsors of this bill. Dedication of the Department of Interior's headquarters here in Washington will be a small but fitting tribute to Stuart Udall's legendary accomplishments, many of which took place in that very building. And at this time, I would, would, would the, uh, send an, uh, a bill to the desk and ask that it be appropriately referred. The uh, bill will be received and appropriately referred. I know my colleague, uh, uh, Senator Mark Udall, is, uh, is here to also speak in support of this legislation. Let me defer to him, and then I'll uh, ask uh, uh, recognition again on a, on a somewhat separate matter. From New Mexico, you yield? I do. Senator from Colorado. I, I thank the uh, Senator from New Mexico for his courtesy, and I, I rise in support uh, of this legislation. I intend at some later date to spend uh, some additional time on the floor uh, talking about my uncle Stuart who was a wonderful man, uh, an uncle uh, to me, but more than that he was a mentor, uh, he, was a, he was a leader and in the last 12 years of his life uh, after my father died really served as a second uh, father to me and therefore I feel like I've lost a, a second father um, in, in recently. 
Uh, I want to thank the Senator for, on behalf of at least my side of the family, I know my cousin Tom uh, will in the right time and the right way express his, his thanks as well. Uh, but my, my uncle was, was many things, uh, but he was at, at his heart a, a uh, student of the West. Uh, he was a son of the West. Uh, he looked always for the lessons that the landscapes and the people of the West uh, could provide uh, all of us. And I, I know the senator from Mexico knows that uh, of the many books he wrote, and he wrote over half a dozen books, uh, one of the ones that I took the most insights uh, from was a book called The, the uh, Founding uh, Fathers and Mothers of the West. And he pointed out uh, uh, in that book that people came to the West, and presiding officer I know would be interested in this, to uh, find a new, a new life. And he, he uh, continued uh, in that vein by talking about the great Western uh, director of, of Western movies, John Ford. And they once asked uh, John Ford, uh, if his movies portrayed the West as it was, and Ford's answer was, no, they portrayed the West as, they sh as it should have been, doggone it. And my, uncle, my uncle's point was that the West wasn't settled by the gunfighters and the, those that uh, got into conflicts. The West was settled by those who came looking to create communities and to work together. And it was the people standing on the wooden sidewalks watching the gunfights that in the end uh, settled the West, established what we know uh, as the West uh, today. Uh, my uncle in particular um, had great affection for and respect for the native uh, populations uh, in the West. And that led him to also have great passion and even outrage about the way Native Americans had been treated. And in his later years, uh, the presiding officer knows he uh, went to bat in the courts through his words and in every form possible, advocating for justice and for fair treatment for our Native American brothers and sisters. He, he could, uh, in our family, we, we uh, characterize Uncle Stewart as he could be outraged without being outrageous. And uh, we're going to obviously miss him. I'm going to miss his wise counsel. And I'm going to do everything I can to live by, I think, the credo that he carried forward, Senator Bingaman, which was uh, he believed deeply we didn't inherit the earth from our parents. We're borrowing it from our children. And I think that's the fundamental lesson that my uncle left us with, and your uh, wonderful and inspiring step to name the interior building after my uncle will help us keep that firmly in our view and keep committed firmly to that purpose uh, in our time on this earth. So I thank you uh, for your leadership. I thank you for your graciousness, and I look forward to this becoming the law of the land.